I want us to shout as we welcome my apostle, Apostle Arome Osai. effort to come here but uh, once and again Satan hindered us but the Lord made a way and we are grateful to him hallelujah Amen. well he has told you my friend has told you his story so no need for me to tell all the stories I appreciate your welcome and I salute the people of this house in the name of Jesus Christ uh, like he said, I'm one of you now. Amen. So, <laughs> so receive me as a brother in your midst, and I trust God to find grace in Jesus Christ to be a blessing to you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, this is your house. This is your home we welcome you come in here with your splendor come in here with your glory come in here and be magnified be glorified be exalted our hearts are tuned our soul is set our eyes look upon you just like the eyes of the servants look upon the hands of their masters we ask oh God that you might grant us mercy cause your face to shine. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You may be seated. All right, as my custom is, we need 40 minutes to set the coordinates with uh, a brief Bible presentation before we climb into the Holy Ghost. And so turn your Bible with me to the book of Daniel, chapter 11. I personally want to salute um, the minister of the gospel that led us in prayer. She was full of God. And while she was ministering, the hand of the Lord came upon me. Well, you will see the manifestation of that hand shortly. But the hand fell on me while she was. So God bless you. In Jesus' name. Are you there in the book of Daniel chapter 11? I want to teach for 40 minutes. Daniel chapter 11. I'll pick a verse, which is verse 32. Daniel 11, verse number 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he call corrupt with flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploit so uh, during the course of this conference i will be talking about the season of the strong the season you know there is a time where it is a crime for you to be a babe in the house of god and the bible speaks about a situation that took place in rama the prophet prophesied prophet jeremiah they say in rama Rachel is weeping for her children and she uh, refuses to be comforted because there are no more. And that scripture was fulfilled in the day when Jesus was born. The principalities in the space were stared and they took advantage of the power that was in the throne of Herod and they wrecked havoc. That was a day where it was a crime to be a child. There are seasons in the 
a manifestation of the plans of God, the administration of the plans of God, where there's so much agitation from the kingdom of darkness. And in those times, innocence, you know, the children were innocent, but innocent was not an adequate ticket for survival. Being a child was a crime in that time. So we are talking about the season of the strong. Because the days in which we live, you are going to be marginalized if you are a child, things that will be so manipulated from the realm of the spirit that even your education will become a mockery. And so we need to talk about the things that you need to do in order for you to be numbered among the strong. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt with flatteries. But the people that do know their God, the first manifestation the first sign of such people is that they will be strong <laughs> and the second sign of, of such people is that they will do exploits i know you are saying amen but i like you to take note of something in this scripture the bible didn't say the people that do know jehovah it said the people that don't know their god so a man that knows the the spirits of the water he will be strong uh, if you know your own God, the result will be that you will become, you are a strong man. And if you know your God well, you will have capacity to influence the natural space and to command it to conform and to align and to fulfill that which your authority has capacity to prosecute. So, a man that knows Satan is going to be strong. Mm. The man, I don't know, in, in, in the Zulu land, what do you call Satan in your local? It's Satan. Ah. So we need another tribe. If you are from another tribe, let's, let's take inventory. We need to take inventory of what, what is the devil in your tribe. Anybody from any other place that is not. We, I know we are in Zulu land. When we were teenagers, we heard about Shaka Zulu. <laughs> and I never knew I would be in Zululand someday. So you, we know you all over Africa, you Zulu people. Now, the Bible says the people that do know their God, what will happen to them? So I want to show you some permutations that took place where Satan brings his strong and God brings his strong. The politics of the direction in which a nation goes, in which a territory goes, is consistent with the pendulum of the strong in the land. Now, come with me quickly. Let's go to the, let's do Acts of the Apostle chapter 16. Acts of the Apostle chapter 16. Acts 16, let's uh, begin from verse number 13. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by the river where prayer wont to be made, and we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the house of Thyatira, which worshiped God ahead of us, whose heart the Lord opened, and she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized, her household and her household, she besought us, saying, If I have, if, if ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. First of all, I would like you to notice. Are you with me? Amen. Stay with me just for 40 minutes, okay? <laughs> Amen. I'd like you to notice that this woman, okay, these missionaries, they were going to the prayer spot. And while they came to the prayer spot in a very informal way, they began to engage the women that resorted there. 
and, and, and surprisingly, the hand of the Lord came mightily upon this woman, Lydia. Everybody knew her in the territory because she was a seller of purple. Now, I, I need to take you back into history because in those days, um, people's garments were either white or, or black. The tie and dye technology of that time could only produce white or black. But this woman was one of the few people that understood the technology of how to produce blue, purple. And purple eventually became the royal colors of those times. So if you find anyone that is a seller of purple, that person is the, the a customer of that person is the king and the royalty within the space, making her an economic giant. And the moment her heart was open to the things of God, can you see her level of generosity? She afforded the apostles a dwelling place to make their mission comfortable so that they will have enough rest to prosecute the mandate of God. Because of her openness, because of the openness of her household to the ministry of the apostles, the work of the Lord began to take root in the land and the kingdom of darkness was agitated. Are you seeing that? Still stay in Acts chapter 6. Are you with me? Don't worry, we are going far. I'm just trying to lay <laughs> the foundation. I want to lay the foundation before we begin a real journey. In Acts, are you still there in Acts chapter 16, beginning from verse number 16? And it came to pass as we went to prayer. Notice it was in the prayer meeting, the prayer place, that God encountered Lydia. Do you still remember that? Oh, you are not with me. And whenever I notice that your appetite for truth declines, I will stop talking. I will stop talking. I will stop talking. The first time I, I left my room today is to come out for this meeting. From yesterday night till this evening, I just came out now because I had to receive something for you. So if the capacity of what I receive, you don't have capacity to receive it, I, I know how to make our adjustments. <laughs> I want you to remember that it was, they were advancing towards the place of prayer when God arrested Lydia. And even though God, by an act of sovereignty, arrested her, Lydia responded, yielded, the, her heart opened. Now, these guys were going for a prayer meeting again. And when they were going for prayer, the Bible says, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us till prayer which brought her masters much gain by her soothsaying. You see, the devil realized that Lydia was a great economic benefit to the agenda of God in the territory. So what he did is that he raised his own strong. His own strong was, had the spirit of what? Divination. And she was a soothsayer. And the product of her soothsaying was an economic, economic manifestation that strengthened their affairs and the concerns of the kingdom of darkness. How many of you have ever played chess before? Well, you've never played it. So you don't know chess? You know chess? This is chess. God pushes Lydia, gives her, you know, economic power, and the gospel begins to prosper. Paul is comfortable. His, his team are comfortable. They have shelter. The land is, they are beginning to integrate in the, into the land. And their key was prayer. Oh, you are not with me. And then it came to pass, they were still using their key. And Satan said, God, these guys are going to gain. They have economic power to their advantage. There's a mixture between economic and spiritual power. They are going to take over the territory. So suddenly, Satan raises his own counterfeit. And guess where he puts his counterfeit? In a prayer meeting. And her reputation was that through the suit saying that she did, she brought her masters much gain. Ah, I don't have time. I don't have time to show you the signs of toxic and counterfeit ministry. You will see it. If I start on that note, South Africa will say, ah, this Nigerian man came to, he came to fight. <laughs> so I'm going to pretend as if I... I didn't see it. 
Hallelujah. He brought her masters. What? Gain. Much gain. The objective was about gain. When you, when you find someone, when you find someone on the pulpit, and everything that the person does, it ends up with gain. Ah. Oh my God. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. So any genuine minister of God, you will find he is at home with the spirit of sacrifice so that the virtues of the Lord will come to the people. Hallelujah. Yeah. So it, 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 it's, it's a contrast. Yeah? I'm just trying to show you a contrast and a comparison because most of what we have in South Africa's ministry is just like this lady. The objective is gain. And when, you know, I followed your nation, I followed the church in your nation for a very long time. And I pitied several people I saw in several conferences because of the exploitation that was going on. And that exploitation is in sync with the spirit of divination. I want to stop there. Now, and all of this, all of this took place. You see, when Satan, when Satan brought his own strong person because the bible says the people that do know do know their god so this one knows the spirit of divination this one is strong he can do exploits and satan now took that one and planted her in a prayer meeting now if paul were not a man that had the capacity to design i don't know how many of you went to bible school but if you did introduction to prophecy the thing that that lady said under the influence of the spirit of divination is equivalent to prophecy. There is no scripture in the Bible that can conflict and contradict that utterance as not passing accurately as prophecy. These are the servants of the Most High God that show unto us the way of salvation. That's why you need to know that in the school of discernment, there is a difference between true and truth. But because the subject this night is not discernment, we are not going to dabble into all of that. But we have a lot of work to do. And um, I think uh, the Lord is pleased to give us regular access to uh, South Africa. So we are going to be building. Amen. <laughs> we are going to be building. Amen. Amen. And so, this, do you realize that when this lady began to do this thing that looked like prophecy, it, it passed for prophecy in the apostolic company for, for many days. And guess, guess the kind of thing that will happen. When, when they see that her utterance is accurate, she says true, she's likely to become the prayer leader. Because of the gift. She has capacity to speak by the mouth of God. Oh, glory. <laughs> and Satan, by the agency of this strong man, would have destroyed the ministry of Paul in that territory. And everything that God wanted to gain by creating comfort to Paul's ministry, giving him shelter, giving him accommodation, giving his team shelter, giving them food and vegetables to eat so that they will be healthy enough to preach the gospel. Everything God had in mind to gain was going to be thrown into the trash can if this strong man was not detected. I also ask you a few questions to find out if you are a strong man. But it's only the people that do know their God. During the course of my ministry, I've had the privilege to confront Sangomas. I think that's what you call it here. Yes, high-level Sangomas confronted them. The reason why I'm still here is because they didn't win. Mm, they didn't win. Um, all right, let me take you to another scripture quickly. Please bear this scripture in mind. We might come back again. But I need to show you the game of chess. The game of chess that is played. Spirits are the ones that play this chess. And the pawns on the chessboard are men that have been equipped by these spirits. And these men are called strong men for the people that do know their God. They shall be strong and they shall what? Do. So spiritual strength confers upon the bearers the ability to do. So I need to ask you 
what you can do. Very soon, I'll give you a good list of what you can do so that you can, you can categorize yourself adequately because most of us think more highly of ourselves uh, than, the, than the provisions of Scripture has allowed. Uh, it, will, it will be great for us to begin on a note of humility as we journey into the heart of God tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8. Turn with me. Eight verse five. Acts eight verse five. Then Philip went down into the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them, and the people with one accord gave heed unto the things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed and there was a there was great joy in the city but there was a certain man called simon which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of samaria giving out that himself was some great one to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest saying this man is the great power of God. So in Samaria, it was the devil that invaded that place first and planted the man called Simon. Oh, are you with me? The Bible reveals that Simon was so proficient in the ways of witchcraft that he bewitched an entire city. Do you, do you know, are you aware that a whole nation can be held under witchcraft? You are going to University of Pretoria, but you are under witchcraft. You are trying to develop yourself, but your possibilities have already been measured by the ruler of witchcraft. <laughs> Hallelujah. If only God were to open your eyes to see what you have capacity to become, you are celebrating something that is very, very insignificant compared to your capacity, you have not been able to achieve maximum capacity utilization because the stronghold of witchcraft unknown to you has, has pegged your advancement. One man that Satan planted in the place. And, and guess what? He was responsible for, the, for bewitchment and witchcraft in the territory and the people were hailing him. What name did I give him? The great power of God. Do you know that that strong man is going to remain in that territory and they will be hailing him to their deaths until God decides to play his card on the chessboard? And when he plays his card on the chessboard, he doesn't use babies and infantiles, juveniles. My question to you is, can you make a difference in Peter Marisburg? Is it true? Hallelujah. I'm trying to calm myself. I'm trying to calm myself. The people that he bewitched gave him a nickname. The great power of Jehovah. The great power of God. That means if he's walking on the street, he doesn't need to be elected into a political position. He already has a stool, an office that the people have given him. Not by election. He is their great power. The people that do know their God. So who rules in your family? Are you the one? Is, is, it, is it true that it's your spiritual influence that is responsible for the direction in which your family is going? Even when people come to church and think it's a, it's a tradition, that's what we do. No, 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 no. This is where you come to be made strong because the pendulum will not shift until another strong man comes into the field. Oh. I am from Nigeria, and I can tell you that the outcome of politics is not a function of census and polling units. It's a game of power. The destiny of nations are seized in the realm of the spirit. Your family is a, can be a victim of darkness. Meanwhile, <laughs> You, you are not 
you are not concerned about your prayer life. You just accept it. Witchcraft is more potent when the victims are not aware his influence is there. When you begin to notice symptoms like people, ladies in the family cannot get married. Beautiful, wonderful, chaste. And they marry every other person except them. Then you know that you need to find the great power that is operating within the corridor. Chess, your life is a victim of a chess game. Spirits are interested in your family. And the advantage of heaven will never come until God finds a strong man. The people that do know <laughs> their God, they shall be strong. How I wish I had time. I would have taken you somewhere and I, I would have dissected who you are, show you your capacity from inside. Then you will, you, will, you will pity yourself that you have been weak all these years. The very people that were oppressed by the man's witchcraft gave him a name. The great Sanguma. So when he comes to the shopping mall, the people give him honor. Meanwhile, he never contested for an election. His position is a product of manipulation. Witchcraft. He bewitched the entire city. And he was the chieftain of the territory until Evangelist Philip. <laughs> the heavens now. It took so much time. You know, it took so much time for Simon to be challenged because nobody was interested in be becoming strong. Everybody wanted to be a churchgoer, get a job in the central business district, make a hundred thousand rand, marry a wife that sings in a choir, <laughs> get a message Benz, and testify hallelujah. You see, our scale of measurement is not according to destiny. And that's why we celebrate things that angels cry about. If your life and your destiny does not influence the politics in this, your family space, then God is still looking for another strong man to change the e equation that your, negli your negligence has allowed. Are you the one who is to come? Or should we expect another? I don't know what transaction they did in, in my family. But when you arrive at the age of 21, Satan pays you a visit. We're seven in all. And our firstborn got to 21. Those of you that are in, the, in medical science, you know uh, the situation, the condition that is called schizophrenia. How many doctors do we have here? Any doctor? Oh, okay. Okay, we don't have any medical personnel. Do we, do we have nurses in this place? All right. So you know schizophrenia. <laughs> All right. He, 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 had, he got admission to, read, to study medicine, and he went to school. And before the examination, that examination they write in 300 level, he came back home with schizophrenia. My sister got to 21 and when she got to 21, she stepped on something that we do not know till this day. And this left leg became as three times big, bigger than the right leg. Oh, our third born got to 21 and his own infirmity could not be diagnosed. Samples were taken to majestic hospitals and uh, there, there was nothing that their systems could find. Hmm. I beheld my elder brother run mad before my eyes at the age of 21. That's somebody doing exploits there. Oh, yeah. It's a product of exploits. Oh, have you ever seen someone that gave him an appointment in, in, in an office that everybody wants to be the chief executive and they gave him the chief executive appointment and he just stepped into the office. He, oh, he's so excited. The moment he sits on the seat, he becomes crippled. Now, 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 you say, oh, no, that's a miracle. It's a negative miracle. It's a demonic miracle. <laughs> No, it's a miracle. Oh, you don't know that people like Simon also work miracles. What is demonic? The de demonic time. They are strong men, so they have the capacity to do. 
You're not likely to run too far if you cannot do on the basis of your conviction and your faith. If you are incapable of doing anything, uh, then you are a rolling stone. Any breeze that is intense can change your direction. Anything can change your channel. How many of you have ever, you are using an LG and you bring the remote control and you change it from 32 to 34? Satan can change your channel. Mm, if you don't have stature, you will, you will be shaped in his image, in his idea. May the Lord give you understanding. I know that as we study on, you won't say amen again. And I'm comfortable with that. We are here to build you through the word of God. So, it took so much time and God was working on Philip. And Philip never knew that the reason why God was hard on him was because there was a territory called Samaria. The place God trains you is different from the place God will manifest you. And your training has no correlation whatsoever from the mental perspective to your manifestation. Many times you will cry. But God knows the measurement of the territory. He knows the nature of the darkness. He knows how long the darkness has strived. So he knows the capacity that he needs to build in you for you to have the capacity to dislodge the darkness of the territory. If you had come to, to Philip the evangelist and, and, and he will complain to you and tell you, oh, why is my life like this? Because there are believers like that that are complaining. And they don't know that it, it, Satan is not the one in charge. It is the government of God that is responsible for their peace, for their experiences, for their dealings, for the volume of prayer that is needed for them to get by. Oh, you see other people that are not praying and you are trying to model your life like them. You are not wise. The Bible says them that compare themselves with themselves. They are not wise. It is God has a custom-made parameter, measurement, a ruler for your destiny and for your life. Someone can be in this place because of the terrible nature of witchcraft presence in your family. God, what has been written in heaven concerning your prayer life is that you need tanks of prayer to get by. Huh? And then you now come and see that someone else whose great-grandfather was an evangelist, great-grandfather was an apostle, father was the one that translated the Bible to your language. Hmm? Somebody that has that heritage. You meet the person in church and the person is not praying and things are working for the person. But you don't know that the person is standing on a foundation of righteousness that have been built for many generations. And then you, that you are coming from the family of a Sangoma, you now look at the person and say, okay, so, so this version is possible. They that compare themselves with themselves, the Bible says, they are not why. Mm. Listen to me. It is Satan. Satan doesn't have the capacity to administer people individually. He doesn't have it. He doesn't have the, the, the workforce. He doesn't have the administration to deal with every sinner individually. So he deals with them in groups. The ones that are overtaken by women. The ones that are drunks. Do you understand? So he deals with, deals with them in groups. So that he can manage them in groups. He doesn't have the resources to manage each sin as an individual. But God is so vast in his administration that he has layouts for you. Peculiar designs for the protocol of your development is captured in the economy of God for your life. Oh, when you start getting serious with God, you begin to find out your own design. Because people in my own shape, they are supposed to see God more than they see man. So I learned how to pray for 24 hours. I can stay indoors for three days. And it's not an affliction. You are not punishing me. You are helping me. I discovered my own measurement in the spirit. So the trousers I wear in the spirit are according to my measurement. I will not wear your own in the spirit. I know mine. So you came to church and you saw someone and you began to pattern your life after the person and you forgot where you are coming from. 
And when darkness begins to manifest in your life, you will say, hey, does this scripture work? You abandoned the dimensions of your own sacrifice. So when I was 20 years old, I knew it was one year that was left for Satan to come visit me. So I learned how to pray in tongues in the night. <laughs> yeah, I learned how to pray in the night. Kabokele ke kai in the night. Mai kapora masantoria in the night. I learned how to pray in the night. So, and those days I was on campus. So we had this prayer group that prays from twelve midnight to uh, one a.m. We called it sixty minutes with Jesus. So when when I read, I start reading from about seven o'clock, eight o'clock in the evening. I, I study till twelve midnight. Then we'll go for the prayers. Then we'll come again. We'll continue the reading and we'll go to sleep by um, three o'clock in the morning so that was my routine that was my routine so those of us that were in the sciences couldn't joke with our books we, we had to read so we now slot prayer 12 midnight that's the midpoint so i forgot that it was my birthday i was a bit late for the prayer so i was heading to the prayer place i know i hope you know how a campus walkway looks like it's always busy day and night but that day I was alone. And a strange bird appeared. I didn't say it flew. How did it come? It appeared. With an attempt to stand on my head. Then I realized that was how my brothers became mad. So I spoke in tongues. And I spoke in tongues in capital letters. Kuva <laughs> <laughs> When I opened my eyes, I saw that one of the wings of the bed had broken. I said, okay, this thing is working. Three days after that encounter, one of the last survivors among my ancestors that refused to die, he saw seasons and saw moons and saw new moons. That's a man in the physical if there is a fight here, he will take his back and he will run away. They called him the meekest man of the village. The meekest. He will never quarrel. He can't stand people fighting. In fact, he can't even stand insults. He was a warlock of darkness. I don't know what my dad did to him that made him so, so, so offended. And he wanted to vent his, his bitterness on every one of his seed. Fortunately for him, I was, I was in the spiritual gym developing biceps. Developing. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and he had no, his data bank did not capture the fact that there was a development that was going on. The same way he struck everybody without challenge. He thought he would come and strike. And then he heard a language that summoned the powers of heaven. He was struck so bad, he did not recover. Three days after the encounter I had in the village, he woke up and stood by his door and he fell face down and he died. That's how peace came to the clan. The man of darkness will boast until God finds someone he can place on the chessboard. So in the case of Simon, Philip was God's answer. And in the same space where darkness ruled, God would put an agent of light. And when Philip came to Samaria, he was not briefed that there was a Lord in the territory. He was not told that there was a Lord in the land. He was not told that there was an, a diabolical father that had his throne in the territory. He came with goodwill and with the message of salvation. He preached Christ and he walked miracles. And unknown to Philip, his prayers and the authority with which he came plumbed out the web of witchcraft that held the city. And when Simon saw that a power beyond his had invaded the land, he pretended as if he had given his life to Christ. 
And I hope you know in the fivefold ministry, the evangelist ha has zero discernment. Yeah. Oh, I know. Maybe some, an evangelist might be offended, but I'm, I'm sorry. That's, that's what we found in scripture. Philip was running the ministry in an evangelical way. So he, 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 he unknown to him, Sangomas were in the new believers class. People like Simon were, were admitted. And they were teaching them, preparing them for baptism. In fact, they even baptized Simon. <laughs> May you not be blind in the name of Jesus Christ. They baptized Simon. And then they sent to Jerusalem. And said, Samaria has received the word. And two brothers were introduced. Peter and John. These ones were operating from a different office. And from the office of the apostle, that's where discernment sits. Huh. Mm. I, won't, I, won't, I won't press. I won't press. I won't press. So they laid their hands on somebody and the person will speak in tongues. Laid their hands on the other. And the demon in Simon was agitated. And he said, I've been doing this thing of power for many, for many years. They don't give it for free. Hey, hey. He now brought money. Instantly, Peter looked upon him. Let me show you what Peter said. Peter saw something that the evangelist could not see. The evangelist was very powerful, but he could not design. Oh, in the times of revival, so many things will be happening. Trust me, which is too will be present. And if the apostolic office is not there with its attendant dimensions of discernment, who accept idols as Jehovah. Just like in your nation, there are many pastors that are not born again. They just converted Sangoma practice, put on suit, and came to church. And Jesus never sent them. The landscape is going to be mixed until the true apostolic trade draws the plumb line, the line for building and the line where darkness dwells. The days in which we live on the continent of Africa, for so much has been done to disdain the name of the Lord in the name of preaching. And so like you said, you got that word. Purging is coming to the church. Oh, 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 it's coming. And there's going to be a renewal. The hand of God is going to be upon his people. And there will be mighty and swift judgment against the sorcerers. Philip's ministry could not decipher who was on God's side because of the evangelistic embrace. He embraced scorpions and serpents and brought them into the comfort of the house of God. But two brethren were introduced. <laughs> they had a different form of calibration. Their perception was deeper than that of the evangelist. I want to bring out what... what, what what? Yeah? Okay. Give me a moment. Hallelujah. And now when the apostles which were in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. This was... Are you still seeing the, the chess game? I hope you know the strongest piece on the chessboard is the queen. What's the next? Huh? You have not been playing chess. So this is the king and queen that they're pushing. Of conquest. Jesus in the labor room was trying to prepare them to receive the responsibility to oversee an enterprise that was global in scope because he said ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth it's a global enterprise so he was preparing them for that so when you study the book of Acts of the Apostles wear the glasses the lens of territory it doesn't matter what was sitting on the territory before these functionaries come. 
they topple it. They overtake it. And they establish the seat of their king in the land. Eh, South Africa, I heard your name while I was in the depth of prayer calling on the one that inhabits Zion. He spoke about your land. Yes, that a season was coming for his visitation. Listen to me. It will be a great moment of judgment. Many will fall. Many, many that he has not sent. That have taken off like a tornado to speak for him. And they have done damage to his body. He takes inventory and he takes it into account. And he is about to come with fire in his eyes. There is a potential that this nation has that has been shut down for so many years because of the presence of witchcraft. And God is saying that a season breaks upon the territory where the black hand of darkness that has kept it under siege will be challenged. And the spirit of God, of him that dwells in the light that no man can approach, will do damage to that hand. And a new season will break upon the land. Oh, the things I see now, I can't say it in the public. It has to do with politics, it has to do with governance, it has to do with elections. So I don't prophesy elections. And uh, Hallelujah. But I can tell him, I can tell Pastor. I came to tell you that that season has come. Should I speak in parables? Maybe I will speak in parables. Your next election is the most sensitive election in the history of this nation. It's a game of chess. For the two kingdoms we seek to domicile, to, to master, and to best the territory. Watch! Watch and receive wisdom. And if you walk by counsel, the day of the saints will be born. Because the pathway will be made for the son of righteousness to stir the affairs of the land. I speak in parables. He that has ears, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So this game of chess is ongoing in every territory. In every workplace, when you come to the workplaces, you think that the workplace is neutral. You were the only one that did not come spiritually armed. Somebody drank water that was in a bottle that had a green snake before he came to that office. You just came to the office and, and you didn't even pray in the morning. Your only defense was your tie. And that's why your, 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 your promotions are skipped. Your, your elevations are forgotten. Everybody moves except you. And the cycle, the thing goes round, but you are forgotten. It is not because you are incompetent in terms of your service delivery or your capacity for intelligence. It is not natural. You need to switch to the supernatural realm and fulfill the priesthood for which God brought you into that corridor. And mount your altar and secure the gates that God has called you to defend. Until we see life from the realm of the supernatural, you will think it's just a product of education, certificates, uh, opportunities, and possibilities. In the fight between David and Goliath, as mighty as Goliath was, his confidence was not in the power of his soul. He brought crosses on David in the name of his God. So the battle was taken from the natural and the battle was situated in the supernatural. And David said, you come against me with sword and shield, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts whose armies you have defied. So the battle moved from the natural and it moved into the supernatural. And when, that was where the real battle was fought. But between principalities and demons. And the outcome of that battle was interpreted in the natural by the foolishness of catapult. It was catapult that decided it in the natural. Can you imagine that? That the foolishness of catapult was what the, the decided it here. It, it's because it was already won. 
So anything, any mistake that happens here will go in the direction of what is already settled in the realm of the spirit. Next time, go and take a, a, your, your catapult and, and try it without the backing. You will find that you are, you are naked. Mm. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. You can't explain them from their natural outlook. But they are mighty and the only reason why they are mighty is because they have been processed through God. You might, that day when I spoke in tongues, you might look at me and even laugh. But you see, if you, don't, if you have not seen the temple into which I pray, because our temple is domiciled in the heavens, that's where the priest started the order of Melchizedek. That's where it ministers. Except you visit that temple, you will not know the potency, the energy I'm creating when I speak in tongues. In, in, in the natural, you look at it and you despise it, but it is not carnal. It is mighty. It is mighty. It is mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds, to the casting down of imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. The generation in which we dwell is about to experience a shock because God will show up new men will be introduced on the chessboard and the pendulum of power will shift one more time if you are still with me say amen, amen. well as i try to round up because we don't have much time let me begin my lecture I need to introduce the scripture that will establish the journey and that's first samuel chapter three if you have it let's go Everything I did was an introduction just to bring you into the economy of why we need strong men on the block. Now I need to show you how God makes a man strong. Amen. Stay with me. Stay with me. Tomorrow in the night, bring the sick. Bring the afflicted. They will be loosed here. They will be loosed. They'll be loose here. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days, was scars in those days. And there, were, there was no open vision. When strong men, after the order of the kingdom of God, are lacking in the territory, things that were abundant in a certain time will become scarce. I heard in your history that there was a time where evangelists walked these grounds and they proclaimed the kingdom, proclaimed the power, they proclaimed glory. If those things are lacking now, it means the number of strong men have depleted. That's why those things have become precious. They have become scarce. The power of the evangelists that I saw burning in one of yours called Irene of Limpopo. I will never forget Irene. Oh my. It is because of Irene that I bought a satellite just to watch Irene. Because I, I marveled at her passion for souls. And the time came I tried to find her on, the, on, on, on cable satellite. And I couldn't find her again. And I had to make calls. Find Irene. Where's Irene? And I heard she had gone to be with the Lord. So the crusades are scarce now. Deliverance is scarce. All kinds of things are scarce. That's what happens when, when people that were on the chessboard are taken out. The territory takes a new texture. Civilization drifts to a new pattern. I pray that your rising will be the restoration of many things that have been lost in the years past. That your life will be the reason why God will bring it back again. In the name of Jesus. The word of the Lord was cut. The luxury of open visions became an impossible thing. So the mind of God was bleak. No one could peep into it. The eyes of the men in the land were darkened. To the counsel of God. Guess who rules in that kind of situation? 
Satan. In fact, in fact, even the situation of the temple was also pitiable because the lamp of God that God commanded that in all generations that that lamp should be burning. It went out and the people that were laboring in the courtyard of, of the temple never knew. I was privileged to travel to, to Jerusalem and right there in the heart, in the heart of Jerusalem, that lamp is still burning till today. But in the day of this priesthood, the lamp of God, it went out. And that was a spiritual symbolism of the fact that visibility had gone, had left that generation. Imagine the kind of kings that will rise in those days. There were kings that will rise in darkness. Do you still remember the story of Jacob? Oh, you are not with me. You are not with me. Do you still remember his story? He married in the night. Yeah, they smuggled the wrong wife. And he was not aware because everything was under the cover of darkness. So many things happened. The devil smuggles in so many individuals into politics, into business. And they begin to control the economy. They begin to control the politics. They, they determine the policies. And some, you begin to see antichrist policies. You begin to slip in. And, you know, just gradually. And the reason is because there is the, the lamp of God has gone out. I've been an intercessor for more than half my life. And I intercede for my nation. So I know what is happening. I'm interested in the trends, in the outcomes. And I, I watch Satan creep into power. Oh, you don't know this chess game. This chess game can make our children slaves. This chess game can make our children grow in a different world. A different world that is manned by the sons of the bond woman. This chess game. Is a story of the fall of kingdoms and nations. Are you the one who is to come? Or should we expect another? Who among us will rise to end the regime of the darkness that has resulted from the fact that the candlelight in the house of God has been put out? We need strong men in politics. Men that God has raised that can see visions and hear the mind of God to sit as leaders of nations. So that the thrones among the nations can be like the thrones of David. A man after God's own heart. Oh. So visions were scarce. This is just a description of how the terrain has become. Because functionaries of light are missing the land and God desperately needed to tip the scales and so he had to visit a young lad Eli was already blind he was fat with the proceeds of the offerings of the people his neck had joined to his shoulder there was no barrier oh. may the Lord give you understanding I, I'm, I'm trying to paint a picture I want your mind to be active see the picture he had no neck again the fat was so much that his jaw had cleaved to his chest for fat. And you could, you could imagine he had a baritone. Hallelujah. <laughs> the way he's of priesthood and the ability to seek God and to seek his counsel in the land had all been forgotten. It was a mere religious camp. The fire of God was no longer with the people. It was in these obscure times that God, by an act of his sovereignty, attempted to reach out to the young Samuel. The young Samuel, since he came there, God had never visited the temple, so he doesn't even know how it looks like if God shows up. So in order for God not to confuse Samuel, God had to call him with the voice of Eli. That was the only thing he was used to. He had to step down his energies. He stepped down his dimensions. He stepped down his capacities so that he could use a means that the young boy could fathom. That was how far removed Jehovah was. Jehovah had to disguise to show up. He couldn't come with fire in his eyes. He couldn't come with glory on his garment. He couldn't come like a king. He had to disguise and smuggle himself trying to catch someone's attention because he has lost the territory 
Satan was king. If you sleep, Satan will rule. I've heard of you Zulu people, warriors. But you see, the truth is, you are not physical warriors. You are spiritual warriors. This is supposed to be the home of the warrior tribe. But when I come into the territory, I was trying to find flames. I didn't see a love. I didn't see enough flames. Where are the warriors from the Zulu land? The intercessors that understand how to enter with processions into the gates of Zion. Such that have been trained with the language of priesthood that know what to say for Jehovah to open his heart. Where are the men that have living altars that can mount them and cut covenants in the spirit? I was expecting to find such men in the Zulu land. The lamp is dim. Eli is fat. The fathers of the territory have gone to sleep. And they have drank and they have bogus and they have fat. And there's nothing to fight for. And so there is lack of direction in the land. People are looking for light but walking in darkness. The, the fathers that have a little clue of how the dimensions of God have entered into obesity. So God will reach out to another generation. There's a new people that have not been trained in the depths of the spirit. But God himself is the one that we advance towards. Them so that he can open his heart. So that he can cry. A generation passes away, my friends. And God's mighty hand apprehends a new people. That will bring the entire territory into her prophetic destiny. He looks down from above. Many have been disqualified in your nation. And a new breed without greed and a radical opposition against unrighteousness will arise from your midst. Men that are so aligned with heaven that God will give them the grace to speak by the mouth of God. I see that happening in the land. A lot of people have been disqualified, and you will see the waves of judgment that will pass through the territory. Wow. Prepare your heart. For I see you stand on a vast land. Oh my God. Oh my God. Those moments have come again, and God has left his place of comfort. To seek the attention of a little lad. He's not among the descendants of the elderly priests that has slept into obesity. And now God wants to teach this young man the language of the spirit again. So he reaches out to him. But he had to come in disguise with the voice of his master. Samuel! By the time this conference is over, you will hear his voice in the night. Asiko perima handeli. Asaso la uma halaba. Please, I would like you to be comfortable. What, what is happening there is normal. Please, it's normal. It's normal. As I teach, he will come. So please be comfortable with that. Don't be distracted. As I'm teaching, he'll be coming. He'll be coming out of the woods. Coming out of obscurity. Because he wants to stand on the stage and he wants to proclaim his heart. Something is shifting already in the spirit. Something is shifting. Something is shifting. Something is moving. Something is moving in the spirit. And your eyes will see the glory of God. Your eyes will see it. Katile mora Santelia mala Ufele sukeme Sakuria mamanatait I see in the spirit I see in the spirit And I see seven women in the spirit 
and there is a flaming fire coming up on seven women from heaven it's coming 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 seven women a fetimon de liso breski for telaman dulia a brica betos kito macabanta baboria is so brave so brave a kaito peli skaminaito a fatis kenta baboria iva mendo lomo he stretches forth his hand over the territory the little one shall become a thousand and a small one shall become a strong nation for though thy beginning be small thy later end it shall greatly increase <laughs> <laughs> The hand of God, the hand of God is here. The hand of God is here. The hand of God is here. From my left hand side, to my right hand side, from my left hand side, to my right hand side, from my right hand side, to my right hand side. So very man tola, abroske to pila meko badunate, eso si ko brendo mokora. If you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, it's time to pray. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. The gates that were shut shall be made to open. The things that were lost shall be found. The things that have died will come back to life again. in the name of Jesus now those of you here there are about four of you the Lord the Lord wants to renew your anointing he wants to renew your anointing so his hand will come upon you he wants to renew your anointing there are about four of you it's coming it's coming it's coming stronger it's coming stronger it's coming stronger coming stronger coming stronger coming stronger coming stronger it's renewing the anointing